Hello everyone, this is the Daily Joker 77. And now also under my author name, David Rodium. Yes, we're talking about these these book. This book. Without spoilers. Maybe spoilers. Maybe not. I don't care. I don't know. This is a spoiler review. Not review the spoiler explanation, my bad. Explore the spoiler expert explanation. I can't fucking think. I haven't had enough coffee. Speaking of which... Yeah. I need coffee for this. <laughs> so anyway. We're gonna dive into my book. And for you spooky season people for Halloween. I'm just getting a little closer. There you go. That's better. Huh. Now you can see more of me. Yes, I'm in the spooky season mood. And of course, I love talking about my book because it is one of my favorite accomplishments. <sighs> Published this in August. Let's get it and break it down a little bit. Published this in August. Excuse me. And absolutely love, love, love this book because, well, for one, there is a typo. Just ignore that. When you read it, a lot of people have. That's good. Otherwise, it's really well put together. There's twists in there you'll never see coming. That's the only part I'm not going to spoil. Uh, there's actually wait, one. It's the midpoint. Two, what's the ending? I think there's two twists, if I remember right. I haven't read this in a while. I'm just going through the original manuscript and writing the screenplay out right now, which is the extended version of this book, which makes it even more terrifying. It expands on the action scenes, expands on the villains and the story. Just makes it all around a great fucking um, movie screenplay. In all essence. So. <laughs> let's see. What shall we talk about first about this now? Ooh. Let me think. Like, what shall we talk about here with this? What shall we talk about? Yes? Hmm. Let's see. You know what? Let me look through it a little bit here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. Where do I want to break it down here? I guess we'll just start from the very beginning, from the prologue. Okay. Oh, wow, yeah. Talk about the villain. <laughs> Talk about the villains. The villains, I should say. The villains. I may, read, I may read a little bit of this story as I go through this. I may read a little bit of it. Uh, the prologue is actually very creepy and very good. So, basically, uh, how to explain this here? How to explain this? The villain, the villain's origins is ancient Egypt. I'm not talking like you know BC or you know like you know when we commonly know the first dynasty. I'm talking. This is like way fucking before the first dynasty of Egypt, before there was even a civilization, before it existed. And... Holy shit! It's... Oh my god. I can't... I don't know... I don't know if I... I don't know if I want to spoil any of this. Um, but the villain, Countess Sathar, and her mate, Count Dracula. Oh yeah, I said Count Dracula, yes. And he's very, very well done and tasteful in my opinion, of how I established him, because this isn't his book just yet. This isn't his story just yet. It's like, it's shared, but it's not his time to shine. The third book is his time to shine. The second one, slash prequel, is not his time to shine. So basically... Oh, let's not get on the table. Anywho's. And who's or what's it? So, basically, Countess Sathar is my answer to what would be worse than Dracula? <laughs> what would be worse? Would you want Count Dracula as a threat? Would you want his mate to be a threat? Technically, the second Nosferatu, Count Dracula is the first Nosferatu. I don't call them vampires. Vampires are a separate breed. This is what you're going to have to remember while I'm explaining this. Vampires are a separate breed all on their own. 
and Nosferatu are worse than vampires. They are... Mm. They're dialed up to a thousand with their power level, and they are insanely fucking strong. They're insanely fucking fast. Agile. Their senses are unparalleled. I mean, take any man-made spectrum x-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, thermal, night vision. They have all that inside of their fucking brain, you know, that translates to visual acuity. They have that in spades. <laughs> And they can manually switch, like, you're flipping light switches, they manually can swap, is what I should say, they can manually swap to these spectrums on cue, whenever they fucking want. Whenever they fucking want to. It's really disturbing, and they're, let's see, the hybrids are immune to sunlight, those are called nocturnals, they're a hybrid of a human and an Nosferatu. And they could just be naturally born a hybrid. They can be created as a hybrid. So there's two ways. They can be born, they can be created as a hybrid. What I mean by born, Dracula and Sathar were both created naturally. If I remember correctly. I don't No, Sathar didn't have any bite origin marks, so... No, she didn't. Let's see here. Here we go, Sathar's origin, here we are. Yes. Here, want a description? <laughs> Here's a little expert of my book in chapter one versus the prologue, right? Through the ages, there have been myths, legends, and lore of a beast, a predator that feeds on life. There are no facts or any truth. The evidence is scarce at best, if any exists. According to ancient Egyptian history, there was a woman born before the first dynasty of Egypt, Sathar, or Empress, she was called. She, hold on a minute. Boom. Anyway. She was born in 5000 BCE and described as beyond beautiful, strong, fast, and agile with crimson eyes like those of a demon. Her skin tone was pale as death, but stunning. She returned to her palace in the dead of night, soaked in blood. By the time she became 21 in 4979 BCE, she had slaughtered her parents and the entire civilization of what would become ancient Egypt in 3100 3, BCE. Ugh, tongue twister, 3100 BCE. 175 years later, the first dynasty of Egypt began prosperous and plentiful, except for the deaths every week and night at, at night. Sorry, the evidence of the deaths is two puncture marks on the neck and blood everywhere. Now 7,000... 17 years later, the emergence of the beast brings more death and blood. Nosferatu. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start right out at the gate. I mean, this book is just straight up. <sighs> Oof. This just goes, like, full fucking throttle, and I do not fuck around with this. Like, holy fucking shit. Lord. <laughs> oh, I love this book. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god, this is just a great book. So, as that establishes the threat of Sathar, I'll get to Dracula in a minute. But Sathar is the main focus, as we all know now, of this book. <sighs> she has been around for that long, then she has some knowledge. She would know how to handle herself. She would know how to hunt, she would know how to blend into civilization, she'd know how to create a nest without any detection of the authorities of the military or the government. I'll get to that. The government was called the Order of the Darkness. This is not the United Nations. In this universe, the United Nations, the U.S. government, any governments of the world do not fucking exist. They're called the Order of the Darkness. They have been that for centuries, thousands of years. They have hunted anything that goes bump in the night from Nosferatu to vampires to werewolves that are under another name. There's also another term for a werewolf. See, the thing is, werewolves go by a different name that are your... Hmm, how to put it? Just like the Nosferatu are to vampires, these things that... I can't remember how to pronounce this. Um, I'll go actually to the end of the book in the, pro, in the epilogue. Let's see, where do we go? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. What we think of werewolves are actually... <laughs> bear with me. 
Bacullock. They're humans transformed by moonlight into large wolf-like creatures and are as strong and powerful as an Osparatu. No, they're easier to hunt and kill. They're feral, untamed beasts. Watch for the bite. The curse will pass on the method or by genetics pass through generations. Pass down through generations, my bad. Wow. Jesus. That's part of the epilogue here. Shit. Damn. Hmm. Ooh, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what now? You know what? 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 You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna tell you what part of the book this is. I'm not going to tell you, this is on page 60, all the way till 60, 60, let's see here, this goes till page 64, so 60, 64, I will read, it's part of the book, it is part of the creepiest, that's the creepiest part by the way. It's the most intense. It is the most emotionally grounded. Here we go. Something rumbles the earth and the truck comes to a halt. The engine is crushed and generous thrown through the windshield. She, slip, she flips forward and lands on her knee and foot. The other trucks stop and they exit opening fire. The bullets shatter when they come into contact with Nosferatu's skin and a deep voice comes from the woman in a long black cape. Your insignificant attempts at killing me will not work, mortals. You are my sustenance, my food, my cattle. I have drank from you for thousands of years, and you would not know me. I am Asatham Tahem, or Empress Tahem. The undying reapers continue to overwhelm her with silver rounds. She stares down at Jenny, who says, I know that name in my nightmares. You can't be alive. You shouldn't even exist. You're nothing but myth and legend. Asatham chuckles. Van Helsing, do I look like myth or legend? She yells and snarls at Jenna, panicking, blitzes the villain. She leaves small craters where her feet were at. The sonic boom of her sudden movement shatters windows. It is loud and heavy and her roar is unnatural. Her nails are long, sharp claws. She attacks Asatham and gets swatted into one of the trucks. The crack of the impact is like a boom. The glass breaks and is in pieces. Jenna groans and growls. The unit owner shock and disbelief. Mari in ter terror says, One of the goddamn fucks! She can't be one of them! Jane is now looking at the scared police officer. I know this is a big shock, but she is innocent. Look at me now. We need to stay back. She can handle the elder. Whew. Jane says in tears. She is fucking freaking out. Jenna briefly staggers back and sees the elder is going for Jane. Jenna executes a flying sidekick which makes the thunders boom, landing, landing perfectly. Nocturnal sent flying back and is angered. Jenna is in a defensive position, light on her feet and terrible to look at. As the thumb's eyes flame crimson with hate. She shakes with rage and her ribs crunch. How? How is she a Nosferatu? Jack, who has hunted Nosferatu for 10 years but only joined the unit a few months ago, says. He draws a weapon on Jane and, he sh and she shoots the le his leg. The blood spurts a little and she sobs as realizes Jenna may not be innocent. Stay the fuck down, Jenna. Jenna is swiftly hook kicks to the ground and her nose is broken. Go over here, pretty. I'm not done with you. Asatham sneers. Jenna spits out blood, elbows, strikes her, and falls with the clinch. One of them, at the time, break, as the thumb breaks the lock, she push kicks Jenna and drops her cape. The weapons are revealed, just a slimming black, black dress, black as her soul, and lace around her breast cuffs. Jenna smells blood and sees her fiancé in tears and cries softly. Why, if I didn't know you any better, Jeneline, you were nocturnal. You fed recently. Yes, you have. As the thumb says as Jenna sees her rushing, in, rushing her in slow motion. However, it happens in a blink from Jane's and the other's perspectives. Jenna is slammed by her arm in a lock. She reverses a potential chokehold into a badass suplex, creating a massive crater in the ground. Esathon gets up and Jenna tornado kicks her ribs, shattering them. Then she is punched in the gut. Jenna gasps as she suddenly remembers something. She hears screaming. She recalls her first feeding. Security footage revealed to Jane. Jenna left home at 3, 3 o'clock a.m. They returned home soaked in blood from killing Brent at 3.40 a.m., only 10 minutes after the murder. Jenna shudders, recalling his pleas. Jenna, stop! Please don't make me kill you. He yells in terror and he's bitten and fed on violently by Jenna that night, the blood splashing on her face and nightgown. You were a killer, Van Helsing. 
You killed him that night, didn't you? I witnessed it all and I called the police when you left. They saw you briefly, though you moved too fast for them to get to get a good look. In Afghanistan, I fed you my blood. You fell ill and gained your powers. You were my bride. I bit you that night. Jane gasps and sobs upon hearing the truth. The unit tries to aim at Jenna and Richard grabs his handcuffs. I lured you into dreams and I killed the other victims. I am Sathar. I created more of my kind while you, are, while you all were distracted. You were off my scent this entire time, Van Helsing. You investigated your murder. Now come to me, my lover. Asatham says, Jenna can't resist the command. She slowly walks into Asatham's arms. Sathar smiles sinisterly and says, Feed on your betrothed, my slave. You can't resist my will. Sathar holds Jenna like a soulmate and she moans as her neck is kissed. Van Helsing's eyes become bright red as the thirst takes control. Van Helsing, growling low and soft, slowly turns her head towards Jane, who tells her, Jenna, please don't listen to her. You need to focus on my voice. Fuck, stop it. Don't tune me out. Her voice fades as everything else goes black. Jane's circulatory system is visible and red to Jenna, who can see her heart pounding. Darlene Van Helsing, stand the fuck down now. Jane's voice echoes faintly, and Van Helsing bears her fangs menacingly. Her voice hisses as at her beloved. This is only going to hurt for a minute. After falling over Jack's corpse, Jane pulls out her gun and fires, causing the unit to retreat. The shots miss because Jenna is moving too quickly. Still, the bullets eventually hit their target but fail to penetrate because the nocturnal skin is as tough as diamonds when they are ready to feed. The rounds shatter on contact and Jane shudders. No. She realizes that the person formerly known as Jenna Van Helsing is no longer. Only the Nosferatu remains. Jenna licks her fangs with a forked tongue, approaching Jane slowly. The Glock clips and clicks empty. The beautiful woman is now walking is now walking corpse in the moonlight. Jane lets out a whimper and then Jenna officially bites into Jane's jugular vein. The blood spurts on and sprays all over Jenna. Her face becomes caked in blood and dripping off her chin. Jane chokes on the blood, filling her throat and coughs it out. She tries to fight off Jenna, but it's no use. She's being drained and can't do a damn thing. I love you. Don't become like Sathar. Jane manages to say, but Jenna gulps and slurps down her blood. Jane's life slowly fades. She can't reload and her skin shows no life in minutes. Jane can't breathe and dies in Jenna's hands. Jenna licks the last drop. She finally sets down the body and her eyes become sapphire again. Jenna screams in agony as she trembles and shudders after suddenly realizing what she has done. Sathar smiles in wicked delight as Jenna sits on the ground next to her lover. I take pleasure in a death like this. <laughs> she says maniacally laughing more. Jenna's war is deep and chilling. She is absolutely caked in blood. Sathar doesn't see the kick coming. After receiving two roundhouse kicks to the ribs and the head, three elbow blows, and an audible bone crushing, Sathar savagely beats Jenna until she is exhausted. Get out of here, Jenna orders. Sathar says, I'm victorious in bringing out the Van Nosferatu and you, Van Helsing. I win, darling. Then she disappears into a mist. Woo! <laughs> God damn. That was my favorite part of the book. Woo! Almost made me cry. Holy fucking hell. Oh. Oh my god. You can't tell me that does not fill you with a sense of fear and dread. It's like, it just gets you like, I gotta check my pulse. Oh, it's a little, it looks, it's a little accelerated. Not bad. I gotta check my phone. Hold on a minute. Dude, give me one second. Second here. Do, 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 and bam, I'm gonna do, 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 get this off the screen. Thank you very much. Okay. Back to what I was doing. Okay. Okay, now, 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 now. Janelle Van Helsing is the descendant of Abraham Van Helsing, and before she comes back to Michigan, which, mm, mm, represent, anybody from Michigan? I feel you guys, represent out there, represent. Represent, that is my, that's my home state. Mm. So, it is set in Sterling Heights, Michigan. And that is most that's mostly the the central location of the events, except for being overseas in Afghanistan, which Jenna was a Marine. Then Jane, her fiance, eventually, is a Navy SEAL. I'm, I was trying to remember how was it see um I think she's a Master Chief Petty Officer or Master Chief. I can't remember how the rank goes. Um she was she was a senior chief petty officer and then she became a master chief petty officer. And then Jenna, she is a Master Sergeant Gunner. She's a Master Sergeant um, Sniper Scout. Scout Sniper, I should say. Master, um, no, Gunner. I think she's a Gunnery Sergeant. God damn it, I gotta look at the book. Hold on. Can't remember her rank of how I termed it. Give me one minute. Do, 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 do. 
No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. She's a Master Sergeant Scout Sniper. I knew it in the Marine Corps. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, nice. So, that's Jenna's rank. Before she was honorably discharged, she, as we figured out, was fed the blood of Sathar. Oh, fuck yeah, that's a spoiler. Yeah, I revealed the twist. That is a big twist of the book. This whole fucking time, she's investigating murders. Then, she, she actually investigated her own murder she committed in this mystery. That is a horror novel it's a mystery horror novel and it is terrifying as all holy fuck <laughs> like let's be real <laughs> let's be fucking real here right so getting to count dracula yes he is a threat he is prominent throughout the book as being mentioned it's just not his time to shine i don't want to give him the spotlight because if you give him the spotlight then the other characters can't shine. The other villain I invented can't shine. Yes, eventually Sathar is destroyed. Yes, Jenna gives in to her complete Nosferatu nature. That has been there since day one. And this is actually very interesting. She is genetically marked to become a Nosferatu hybrid since birth. She had that genetic marking. That's something that I will reveal in the third book. She is she is genetically an Asperatu from birth. It's very interesting. I just didn't put it in there in the extended version with the screenplay. I will put it in there, right? Yeah. She becomes the true villain of the book. She is the true villain. She is the true villain of the book. All right. So now we have the established. Dracula is going to be in book three as prominent threat. So is Jenna. So Count Dracula gets his time to shine in book three. All right. A Hunter Eternal Sleep. Uh, I need to go through... I need to go through the other titles. I need to find out how I titled the other books. Let's see here. How did I title the other books? Bam. Ooh, you know what? Before I get to the title of the other books... <gasps> do you guys want... Do you guys want to know something really cool that I... I do when I'm writing, I actually figure this out. I write my characters. This is going to be interesting. So here's the character list and actors, actress list, actresses list of, you know, the book. So Countess Sathar, aka Asatham Tahem, is going to be, Charlie Theron is going to betray her. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Arthur is going to be portrayed by Daniel Radcliffe, Jane Hartland, Shailene Woodley. This is fan casting, by the way. So, yeah, Brent Greenfield, Greenfield is going to be in, is going to be portrayed by Andrew Garfield. Generally, Mary Van Helsing. Eh, wow, ooh, I did not notice that's her middle name. I did not notice that's her middle name, and that's the first name of another character. So Elizabeth Olsen is going to be generally Van Helsing or generally Mary Van Helsing. So let me, let me hold on. Do, do, do. Let me change that a little. Bit. Let me change that to the actual spelling of Mary. Okay, the Mari Silkovine is going to be Felicity. That uh, Felicity Jones is going to portray her. Ivana McTavish, McTavish is going to be Karen Gillian, who will be a love interest in a triangle of Jeneline Van Helsing, where Jane Van Helsing, where Jane Hartland is going to be her actual fiance. Yvonne McTavish was a former love interest who was who Jenna was cheating on when with Jane. It's fucked up. I expand on that in the um in the um um screenplay. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. That was not. Let's see here. Yeah, you know what I have to do in the screenplay. I'm gonna have to include Leah Van Helsing, um, which she is gonna be portrayed by Haley Atwell. Then Officer Richard Sokovine, Scott Atkins. 
Count Dracula, aka, 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 oh my god, I can't pronounce that, Esmen Tahem, Jude Law as the young version, Maz Mickelson, the old version, Abraham Van Helsing will be Liam Neeson, the brides, Aseth will be Emma Stone, Sethem, Kira Knightley, Esmen will be Blake Lively. There you go. There is my character list, and there's my actor list. Now it gets to the book titles here. Okay, wow, Jesus fucking Christ. So, A Hunted 2 Vampires, that's going to be the prequel sequel of, um, no, it is the prequel. God, what the fuck am I saying? It is the prequel of, uh, the first Hunted movies, of uh, the first Hunted book. God, I wish they could be made into movies, that would be awesome. Then the third book is called The Hunted 3, The Nosferatu Queen, The Hunted 4, War Part 1, The Hunted 5, War Part 2, The Hunted 6, The Deal, The Hunted 7, and Helsing's Redemption. <sighs> yeah. Oh, the, the way her character ends in the seventh book is going to be heartbreaking. I cannot wait to write that. <sighs> okay. So, there. That's what I wanted to get into today. If you guys have any questions, ask me in the comments. I will be glad to I will be glad to answer them. So basically, if you guys want to read this book, it is on Amazon. It is available in Kindle and paperback. And you know what? I'll see you guys later. This has been Daily Joker 77.